I'm enjoying a glass of hot apple cider. Gardening season has ended here on the farm. October and November are apple season here. I've been very busy picking and processing apples. I've definitely been making a lot of apple cider and applesauce. Today I want to show you how we make apple cider here. We'll be using a Happy Valley Ranch cider press. I don't add any sugar or preservatives, so this is truly farm to table or orchard to mug. Come along and I'll show you how it's done. You can transform your apples into a quality, all natural cider. It is a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. With the August and September apples behind me, in October I found myself picking the Harrelsons. My cat Pumpkin was watching me pick the Harrelsons while sitting on top of the compost pile. In late October I was picking the Regent apples. Regents taste better after a frost. After picking the Regents, the next up was Red Delicious. Admittedly, I never liked the Red Delicious apple when purchased from a grocery store, but since growing my own, I have now changed my opinion of the Red Delicious apple. They were just stunningly beautiful this year. Unfortunately, I'll have to come back this winter with a chainsaw to clean up all of the wind damage that occurred this summer. In November, with daylight savings time, I was pretty much picking apples in the dark every evening. This particular night it was an extremely windy night. I was really concerned that we were going to get a tornado. The winds were just a howling. My ladder tipped over and my hat was literally blowing right off my head. This is a section of Liberty apples on the north section of my farm. My cat Lucy seemed somewhat concerned with the wind. Needless to say, I had to quit for that night. A late variety is the Northwest Greening. I just had one tree to pick, so it didn't take me too long. This is a good storage apple, but not really cider. Also in November was the elections. I'm pretty excited about RFK Jr. and the Make America Healthy Again movement. Did you know that I cannot sell my apple cider unless it is pasteurized? One option to pasteurize my cider is to use sodium benzoate. On my farm, I choose to grow as natural and organically as possible. I'm hopeful that there will be less regulations which will allow small farms to succeed and to ultimately let the consumer choose which products they want to buy. The last apple of the season is the Enterprise apple. Now this is a storage apple. It's really not suitable for cider. But this marks the end of the season. Now we can get busy making cider. The first step is sorting and washing the apples. I do prefer smaller apples to put through the press. Any bad spots on the apple should be carved out with a knife, and if it's rotten, simply discard into the compost bucket. We're using a Happy Valley Ranch cider press and the model is American Harvester. I'll have a link in the video description. I've got a bucket of washed Harrelsons ready to go. When we acquired our press, it was in pretty severe disrepair. We replaced all of the lumber on the unit. It's also missing several teeth. The handle is not the original handle. The stainless steel base appears to be handmade and does not come with the unit. Step one is to grind the apples. Take your bucket of washed apples and throw them into the hopper. Grab the handlebar and start manually grinding. It's good not to overfill the hopper. I also find it helpful to use smaller apples. It is not necessary to cut them. We put them in whole. It can occasionally get jammed or lodged. So lessen the amount that you're putting in and slow down if you need to. It's really helpful if you can have one person grinding and the other person loading the hopper. You can purchase a motorization kit for this unit, but as you can see, we're choosing to get some good exercise. So looking into the hopper, you can see the rotating drum with the teeth on it. Surprisingly, the teeth are very short and not very long. Because our unit is old, it is missing some teeth. 
We need to fill the basket with the pulverized apple. This produces a very coarse apple pulp. It does not shred it finely. These units truly are an heirloom piece. We've been using it since 2009, and I suspected it was several years old prior to us acquiring it. Of course, for safety reasons, never put your hand into the hopper, and if you have children or grandchildren, make sure to supervise them very closely. Once the basket is full, you can slide it forward. We are now ready to press out basket number one. This wooden plate needs to go on top of the apple pulp. You can purchase a cheesecloth-like netting to put into the basket, but we don't use them. Because we don't use the cheesecloth, you will get apple pulp squirting around and it is rather messy, but since we're doing it outdoors, we have no issue with that. Now it's time to crank down the press. To make that easier, you could put some kind of a board or rod through the top of that, or you can just grab onto it like we are. Initially, a lot of juice will come flowing out of the basket. Ooh, it's a beautiful sight. We have a stainless steel stock pot sitting on the edge to collect the cider. There will be chunks of apple and pulp that falls into the cider, but don't worry, we're going to strain that out later. We're going to give this more time and start doing a second basket. This is what I like about the American Harvester model. While other models have only one basket, this one has two, so we can keep working and save time. While that front basket is slowly pressing out, we're going to keep grinding and filling basket number two. After some time passes, we will come back and push down on that crank even harder. While I've been washing and sorting the apples, and my husband Matt has been doing the cranking, it's now time to switch rolls. Although it might look easy on the video, in reality, it actually is quite hard to push. You can see I'm using both hands at times. It's a good workout. As I'm loading my apples into the hopper, Spaz the cat wants to hang out with me. She's such a mama's girl. If you've watched any of my wool videos, Spaz likes to hang out in all the sheep wool. And she likes to check out what I'm doing. Certainly, some types of apples are better than others for cider. On the other hand, taste is subjective. Do you like sweet or do you like tart? Do you want juicy? Typically you do want a juicy apple for a cider. The cider is so rich on its own that it definitely does not need any added sugar. Maybe a cinnamon stick, but that's about it. You will accumulate a lot of apple pulp at the end of the day. To me, they look like apple patties. They're pretty dry. These are getting hauled to the compost pile. Our sheep get plenty of apples by eating all the windfalls in our orchard. They don't need a high concentration of apple seeds. Once your stock pot is full of cider, bring it into the house and strain it out. We're running it through a rather fine screen strainer. You can see the chunks are getting held back along with some of the foam and sediment. Here's a look at the raw cider. In order to can the apple cider, I use the directions and recipe from the Ball Blue Book of Preserving. We need to heat the apple cider to 190 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. I'm going to use a digital thermometer to check the temperature. 
I've been heating it in this stainless steel stock pot on a low setting for quite some time. You can see here I've actually got to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm over 190, so I need to turn the heat down. And I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. Once the five minutes are up, we're going to fill the jars. After heating the cider, it's time to fill the jars. I'm using a stainless steel funnel and a stainless steel ladle. For apple cider, we only need a quarter inch headspace. The ball recipe states to not boil the cider. Only heat at 190 for five minutes. Now that I've filled the jars with the ladle, we need to measure the headspace. Most of the canning kits are going to come with this measuring tool. This is used for measuring the headspace. It can also be used for, for removing air bubbles in the jar. What's nice about canning apple cider to me is it's very easy. I don't need, need to remove any air bubbles and I don't need to add anything such as lemon juice to acidify the product. It's just as simple as pouring it in and measuring it. So we need a quarter inch headspace. So you just put it on the edge of the jar and measure it. And you can see that we're good here. I'm actually slightly over a quarter inch, so we're definitely safe. I would rather have more space. You don't want to overfill it and risk having the food siphon out during the canning process. So here we're definitely safe. We have at least a quarter inch or more of head space. The next step is to take a dry clean towel and just wipe the rim here to make sure I didn't spill any of the food on the rim and risk it not sealing. So we need this to be clean and dry. The purpose of that funnel, of course, is to make it a much tidier process. So it's pretty rare that I'm going to spill on here when I use that stainless steel funnel. We know that's good. So I'm gonna be taking the lids out of the hot water. So we have both regular and wide mouth in this situation. We're using the magnet that comes with canning kits. You can grab the lid out of the hot water without burning yourself. Next, we need to put on the bands. Now these jars are very hot, so I like to use a towel to grab them. So we need a regular band for a regular jar. You want this finger tight. So when you're feeling resistance and you can't go anymore, stop. And we have one wide mouth here. All right, these are ready to go into the water bath canner for 10 minutes. Once the water is at a rolling boil, it's time to set the timer. For apple cider, we will do 10 minutes. Apple cider is canned in a water bath canner. However, my half gallon jars will not fit in a traditional canner. This is my traditional canning pot, which works for quarts and pints. But the half gallon jars are really tall and we need to make sure that the tops are covered with about an inch of water. So what I'm doing is I'm using a pressure canner because that pot is taller. So this will accommodate for the height of the half gallon jars. The only difference is, is of course, I'm not actually pressure canning. I'm just using the container as a water bath canner and I'm just putting a regular stainless steel lid on the top. Important note here, the ball recipe is only approved for quart jars. The 10 minutes has ended. Next is time to turn off the heat and remove the lid from the canner. Now we will set the timer for five minutes. 
and during this five minutes, leave the jars under the water. Once the timer is up for the five minutes, we can now take the jars out of the canner. Keep in mind that these half gallon jars are very big and heavy. So I like to take a, a hot pad or a pot holder and place it underneath the jar, as well as using the jar lifter. Now we need to set it on a surface that is safe for heat. So what I'm doing is I have ceramic tile flooring and I have a piece of cardboard on the floor. Sometimes I'll use a towel and place it on that. I don't like placing it on my countertop because heat can destroy my, my quartz countertops. As the jars start to seal, you will hear a ping sound. And for any canner, the sound is music to our ears. But you still wanna leave these jars untouched for 24 hours and allow them to cool. After 24 hours, come back and check the jars for the seal. There will be a button in the center. Now these particular lids are a generic. This here is a ball brand lid. And there will be a center button that should suck downward. That means it's sealed. If the button is raised, it means it has not sealed. And you will need to either recan that product or put it in your refrigerator and consume it shortly. If you don't want to can your apple cider, you can freeze it. Simply pour it into a gallon freezer bag and throw it in the freezer. It's as simple as that. Now, enjoy the fruits of your labor. And the best part is knowing where your food came from and what's in it. Hope you enjoyed learning how to make apple cider. You might also enjoy my video on how to make applesauce. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe. Cheers.